You're listening to Sue and Megan giving a healthy chat on 107.1 Highland FM. And welcome. And we welcome back our regular fortnightly segment, A Healthy Bite with Dr. Yasmin Probst. Welcome, Yaz. Hi, how are you both? Very, Very well. well. Thank you, Yaz. How are you on this school holiday, yeah. public holiday Monday? Settling into school holidays as per usual. It's always a bit of a shock factor once mm. it's the first few days. And our house is definitely feeling it so far. Yeah. <laughs> Start the spring cleaning at the end of spring, but never too late. That's right. That's right. Yes. Always have to make a mess to make it tidy. Yeah. yeah. Now, over the last month, nearly a month now, we've been working our way through the alphabet of vitamins. Done vitamin A, B1, and today it's B2. That's right. Yes. Today we'll be talking about riboflavin. So another one of the B group vitamins, another water soluble option for us. And very similar functionality in the body to last week's or last time's chat about thiamine. So it really, it helps us with energy conversion. So our carbohydrate, our protein and the fat that we find in our foods helps to convert that into energy for us. So it's really good for general growth and development, but in particular for the skin. So we find it actually has a particular role in the lining of the digestive tract and it helps to convert vitamin B6, which we'll hear about in a few weeks' time, and folate um, into their process that they need for the body as well. So So it's multifunctional. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And where do we find vitamin B2? So B2, this one's actually in your dairy products. So milk and yogurt, you can find B2. um, And also some of the seafood products and chicken and so forth have also got um, B2 in them. Um, So it's quite a broad range of different food items we can find B2. um, But I guess that also relates to the fact that it does help to convert energy from so many different macronutrient sources, so our protein, fat and carbohydrates. So what if somebody was a a, a lactose intolerant uh, vegan or a um, vegetarian? That's okay. We can still find it in some of our plant sources as well. Um, Broccoli, uh, mushrooms as well. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, it's a nice time to plant our mushrooms. So it's a perfect little vitamin B2 um, option for us as well. And very, very easy to grow mushrooms. Just pop them in a box and they do their thing. They do their thing, don't they? They really do. Mm. Do you buy them in a seeding kit? Or I remember as a child in the laundry, my mother would have a stash in the corner, but I've never done it myself. Mm. Yeah, you can buy them ready-made in a box. So Mm. it's a mushroom kit essentially mm. and they grow their own and you just make sure you harvest them enough times and yeah you've got mushrooms ready for you whenever oh, you need them i'm going to do that the, p- the perfect thing to grow yeah. when you're not really into growing things you don't need a, you don't need a green thumb at all for no. mushrooms they will grow Put themselves them to the side pay them no attention and watch them grow mm. although mushrooms the are working, it's really quite yes. fun to do though like yes especially out this way you know we go out to belangelo state um in the cooler mm. months so and mushroom foraging is beautiful mm. we've done it a couple of times out there but you have to be careful you pick the right mushrooms yes because the yeah. wrong one can be quite dangerous yes people have died haven't mm. they even within the last few years yeah yeah, yeah. So another option as well with our um, B2, B2, I keep going to say B12, goodness, mm-hmm. um, is oats. So oh. vegetarians obviously can eat oats as well, vegans, lactose intolerant. And to get our equivalent um, recommended dietary intake for vitamin B2, um, all we need is a cup and a half of oats and we've got enough there for that one particular vitamin. Right. Oh, that was my so next question. How much did we, what was the recommended daily mm-hmm. intake? So yeah, a so cup and a half of oats, okay. So in muesli or... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or we can make Uncle Toby's oats. Yeah, porridge. exactly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Or you can make those little bliss ball options that are really popular at the moment. Oh. Blend up some oats and add in some bits and pieces. So I've made some of those a little few weeks ago mm. and they were quite tasty. Mm. They're no cook? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, very, very simple mm. to make. Mm. Yeah, so many recipes out there on the internet, but these were literally just lemon juice, um, a bit of lemon zest, the oats, some maple syrup and... To coconut. Yum. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Very simple. You mm. squish them all together and there they yeah. are, done and dusted. Mm. Good for the kids to help too. Mm. Very good. Yeah. No, and less, no, less washing up perhaps. <laughs> Not so much cooking and burning. It's just like eating the cake mixture really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but oats is also good for us anyway. It's so good for fibre and many mm. other things. And I think probably cereal isn't as popular this day and age. Trying to get kids to eat cereal can be quite a challenge in my mm. house anyway. Yeah, I mean, there's such a range of cereals available nowadays. Um, it really depends on finding the right one for yeah. the right person. Um, 
I know at our house we have a, a huge selection of cereals on hand because my kids like the variety, but there are lots of healthy options available. So some of the, I guess, grainy-based cereals mm. can still be quite tasty because they might have some dried fruit in mm. them or um, other bits and pieces which can add to the flavour. Or you mm. just have them with some yoghurt and you get your ex- added mm. riboflavin in there as well. You'd be mm. too in there. Mm. Yeah. We, you did mention, I think, last week that many cereals have a fortified with particularly B1 and some other vitamins. But, and for all intents and purposes are good and healthy, but at the same time being very careful about the sugar content and fat content in some of those uh, commercial cereals. Yes, yeah. that's right, that's right. So there are some commercial cereals that are um, less beneficial than others, we should say. Um, <laughs> but, yes, definitely having a look at the label to see. The top of the ingredients list is always the item that's in there in the highest proportions. Right. And if that's sugar, that's probably not the best cereal choice um, in the morning. Mm. Um but otherwise, a lot of them these days have got some, some really good ingredients as those top ingredient components mm. um, without the fortification. Mm. It's working quite well. Mm. And we, perhaps another day we'll talk about the tick system and the, you know, the healthy tick system, which I know is, comes under, so I guess, a bit of a cloud. But um, at some point we could talk about that. But at that, is that some gauge uh, better than nothing? There are definitely a lot of front of pack label options that can help people to work out whether their product is better in that particular food category. Um, so the the tick label was one that was previously useful for us. Um, there are also health star ratings and just having a bit of a read of what it actually says on the on the packaging because there are some that are mimicking um, those front of mm. label packages as well. Oh, so right. being careful, you're not being deceived by. A false claim, essentially. Mm. Consumer beware, mm. isn't it? Mm. You'll often find me in the cereal aisle at the supermarket reading the nutrition Fine panel. <laughs> and I like to do a bit of a comparison. Yeah. Mm. That's yeah. when I've got time to shop, not mm. when I'm flying in. But did you have to take an effort to do that, don't oh, you? you really do. Because it's not always necessary comparing no. apples and no. apples. Mm. Yeah, and definitely right. no kids then when you're doing the reading of the labels. Mm. Otherwise, wow, who knows what you're reading. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's very true. I, um, just this week, I saw an article in the conversation, uh, Yasmin, that I thought we might talk about today, and it was entitled "Just Because You're Thin Doesn't Mean You're Healthy." And so it was just talking about you know people being in a healthy weight range or people who are thin, supposedly, you know, for all intents and purposes, thinking that their health is good because they're not carrying extra weight. But that's not really the case, is it? Not always, no. It's actually funny that you mention that because just moving on from riboflavin, it's actually deficiency symptoms are related to being underweight. Oh. So you can actually be lacking in your riboflavin oh, okay. if you're underweight. Um, and you'll obviously have other symptoms as well in terms of sore mouth or sore lips, things like those skin related generally because right. of its functionality. But, but yes, um, being underweight does not necessarily mean that you're healthy. Um, you can have really high cholesterol levels. You can have... Um, risk factors for many chronic diseases mm. being underweight by comparison to, I guess, the stereotypical being overweight means you're unhealthy, which is not always the case. Mm. Yeah, I did watch the Catalyst program a few weeks ago and they they went followed the lives of, I think it was four people, in an attempt to improve their health. Um, and one of them was a skinny guy and he was called fat thin because even though he was skinny in actual fact his fat proportion and where it was laid around his organs was actually as bad as the people who were overweight mm. and his health was equally endangered yes and equally put himself at risk then as well of all of those different conditions i mean there are various studies as well to show that um weight is related to mental health it's related mm. to mood it's related to so many different yeah. factors in life mm. um that it's not necessarily the be all and end all to measure the bmi and have that as the one sole indicator for a mm. person mm. because there are so many different factors you can um, be quite an active person and your bmi can still be quite high mm. um, because of your muscle mass so mm. it's not the best trigger for all of us mm. and just remind us the bmi how how does one calculate that yeah it's a it's one that we as dietitians use quite a lot um, so it's your weight in kilograms divided by your height in meters squared um, there are lots of little calculators that you can find on Google that will do that for you if you can't remember um, what I've just mentioned then. But it's it's one that's used quite a lot. But it does actually have some, I guess, classification ranges that vary a little bit. So different cultures really do have different um, BMI ranges. So healthy is not healthy across the board right. for all BMI categories, mm. which is another thing to think about. Mm. Mm. 
And I know that BMI is a, a measure of obesity and how the country is measuring itself against the um, other countries and so forth. And I was just having the, checking the stats in my favourite publication, which is the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, Australia's Health 2018. And it, you know, it reminds us that two-thirds of Australians, so 63% of Australians aged over 18 and over, and more than a quarter of children, so 28% of children, are overweight or obese. Yeah. Which is just astounding. So that's using the BMI, um, yeah, of, yeah, to yeah. Well, to come calculate up with that across. Yeah. Uh, obviously, this is not taking into account the unhealthy, um, skinny people, but this is just look, more looking at weight and overweight, and mm. you know, talking about diet and so forth. But yeah, that is quite incredible. Mm, it definitely is. Um, but it's it's actually the BMI and the stereotypes related to that that have brought in a few different things across. I guess, the nutrition space. So mm. one of those that we've seen coming through in the last few years was the health at every size movement. Oh. So it's the idea that, um, yes, it may be the case that you do need to lose weight, but dieting doesn't always work for everyone. Mm. So you need to actually think about the whole package and all of the factors related to that person. So whether it be exercising in a way that suits them or having a look at different um respectful ways of working through care so how does the healthcare professional actually relate to all of their patients and are they incidentally and without without even acknowledging it being stereotypical yeah. in their practices mm. um and acknowledging the fact that you can be healthy at different sizes and that genetics does come into it a fair yeah. bit as well because mm. mm. it's also down to physical activity too isn't it mm. because i mean i i would say you know i'm a, on the thin side but people say to me oh you don't need to go if i bemoan not exercising you don't need to exercise look at you but fit and healthy and skinny aren't the same it's so non-related you know mm. really a reality of health and uh, fitness is so much more to do with cardiovascular disease as is the diet too but skinny and fit is really yeah and actually with the health of every size movement they refer to it as um, life enhancing movement mm. um, which sounds so much nicer than physical activity <laughs> or exercise <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I guess it considers the fact that not everyone can do every single exercise either yes. so mm. one person it may be yoga for the next person it might be playing cricket it might be yeah. going for a walk goodness there mm. are so many different mm. options for different people but mm. finding those different options and the ones that suit your lifestyle and work for you as well yes. are really what the key is there yeah mm. and that is what our physio Les Olford also said when he was talking about how we try to get that recommended daily amount of, oh, weekly amount of exercise for an average adult is 150 um, minutes of moderate exercise or 75 minutes of vigorous exercise but that's is such a lot of time whenever I even I just try to race to the car park I go wow is this five minutes because I don't know where I'm going to find another five today mm. it's actually you really have to work quite hard and as you say trying to find something that can fit into your lifestyle fit into your your um, health conditions and your physical um, body so to speak um, is what's going to make it happen mm. and finding that time in your day as well where yeah. you could fit that extra task um, I know for me it's been it's taken me quite a while to find that that new snapshot of time um, but over the last few months I've actually captured that and mm. made use of it um, so just looking at your day working out what will and won't work for your family and your lifestyle and mm taking hold of some you time um, mm. to really fit that in, I think, is important for a lot of people. Mm. And we can use the school holidays to nail that down. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, I think, because the weather's getting warmer, it makes yes. such a difference, doesn't it? Because oh, I know I plan to go walking with one of my girlfriends around the corner, but um, when it was cold and yeah. dark early, you just don't feel like it. Whereas now, it's actually a, a lovely thing to mm. do. And next weekend will be even no excuse. That's Daylight right. Saving Daylight starts. saving starts On next Sunday. weekend. I kept yeah. thinking it was this weekend. Being so did I. The, the first Sunday. Mm. Yeah, it's I actually tricky. had to Google that because mm. I was so sure it was this weekend. <laughs> did you make a bed and lost? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Mm. Okay, yeah, so what have we got next week? Oh, next fortnight, rather. Yes, next fortnight. So we'll be looking at the next vitamin in our category, so nice and vit vitamin B3. And we might have a bit of a chat about some other topical issues um, mm. that are coming up in the, the health literature as well. Mm. As I said to you before, whether it's not as we're just paying more attention, there seems to be so much about food, nutrition, mm. science and stuff in the, in the press at the moment. But I guess mm. that's what happens when you open your eyes and listen for a change. <laughs> it's definitely a, t a popular topic, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Now, Yaz, what song would you like us to play for you today? Well, this is one of my three kids' favourite songs at the moment, um, Imagine Dragon Thunder. 
Oh, I love this one too. As much as I don't want to predict thunder at the moment, no. um, especially with this beautiful weather, but you know, late, rain at night time might be okay for us right now. Yeah. Well, it looks like Wednesday and Thursday there oh, might be something. There you go. Well, the we long go. weekend's over now, so yeah. that's fine. Well, thank me. you very much, Yaz, for coming in, and we look forward to seeing you for a healthy.